This is Mark Sherman from Fluid Life. Uh, today we're going to describe how to collect oil samples using an oil suction pump. Uh, so first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the materials that are required. Uh, obviously we need the oil suction pump, uh, we need some sample bottles, we have a plastic tubing here, uh, we have an exacto knife for cutting the tubing, and this jug of oil is going to mimic what an oil reservoir would look like in the field. So this is where we're going to collect our sample from. Uh, in addition to that, I've got PPE. So step one, what we're going to do is we're going to collect uh, some tubing. All right. You want to make sure your tubing is long enough that it can extend down into the reservoir and give you a representative sample. What we're going to do is we're going to now insert this tube into the top of the pump. Uh, and we're going to thread this lock nut. Okay. Then we're going to come along with our sample bottles. The reason I have two sample bottles is because I'm going to use one of them as a flush jar, and I'm going to use another one as the sample that I eventually send off to the laboratory. So I'm going to thread on my sample bottle. Now we're ready to proceed. So what we're going to do is we are going to insert this tube down into the reservoir. Uh, when you do that, it's important to have this tube end up in a place that is roughly in the middle of the reservoir. You want it to be a representative sample, so you don't want it to go too far down, otherwise it's going to scrape the bottom and you're going to see a lot of debris in your samples. Uh, so once you get to a good place, you're going to then start to uh, start the flow of oil by pulling this plunger. Okay, what we're going to see is the oil flow uh, going into the bottle. Uh, this is a flush. You want to flush basically as much oil as you feel is necessary before you get a representative sample. It could be as little as 15 milliliters, it could be half the bottle, it, it really depends. Use your discretion on when you feel that there's a sufficient flush. Once the flush is done, we're going to thread the bottle off to break the flow of oil. And then we're going to come along with the actual sample bottle that we intend to send to the laboratory and continue the, uh, the oil flow. Now, depending on the viscosity, this flow of oil may be uh, faster or slower, but you want to get to the 75% full point, and there's these hash marks you can see. That's how much oil the laboratory needs to provide your testing. So once we get to that point, we're going to crack the, uh, crack the bottle open then and break, this, break the, uh, the oil flow. And then we're going to cap this off. We're going to do our best to uh, put the cap back on. Okay. And then we're going to detract the tube and we're going to immediately discard the, uh, the, uh, the tubing. Uh, these tubing are intended to be one time use, so you want to discard them right away and use another tube for your next sample. So, now we have our oil sample. Uh, the next thing you're going to want to do is to register the sample, make sure you provide all the information to the laboratory about where this came from, and then you can ship, ship it off. Thank you. If you have any questions, my name is Mark Sherman. Feel free to check out our website, fluidlife.com, or give us a shout. Thank you once again.